Joseph listened to his dad and followed God. He was more obedient to God than his brothers. Joseph valued the teachings highly and he loved following God. He was upset when he saw his brothers doing things against God and carefully and gently he tried to get them to change. The brothers were jealous of Joseph because Jacob loved Joseph because he loved God so strongly. Joseph hated sin so much and wanted his brothers to change, so he told Jacob what his brothers were doing. This, however, made their jealousy of Joseph turn into hate. An angel gave Joseph two dreams where his family bowed down to him. He told his brothers about the dreams and they were angry with Joseph for thinking he was superior to them. Joseph's brothers thought Joseph's dreams might come true, so to stop this from happening, they discussed killing him. But then they decided to sell him as a slave. However, God overruled their plan, and despite the brothers doing this, God made the dream come true. Joseph was sold and taken to Egypt. God went with Joseph to Egypt, and angels prepared it so that Joseph would be comfortable there. A man who worked for Pharaoh called Potiphar bought Joseph. God ensured Joseph was successful in everything he did. So Potiphar was very pleased with him, and he trusted Joseph. When Joseph was tempted by Potiphar's wife to break the commandments and to do something against Potiphar, he refused. Joseph told her the blessing that God gives from following him. He would not break Potiphar's trust or sin against God even because of her threats. When she falsely accused him of doing something wrong, he didn't worry. He knew that he hadn't done anything wrong, and he trusted God would always help him. He was thrown into prison, but God turned these bad things into a blessing. He made Joseph popular with the prison guard, and he was put in charge of all the other prisoners. This is an example to everyone. Although we are tempted to do bad things, we should remember that God is always available and willing to help us to do the right thing. If you fear God, he will be a shield. God allowed Joseph to suffer by being put in prison to prepare him for an important job. Joseph didn't forget God, even though he was a ruler over the whole of Egypt. He was a foreigner and was often sad, thinking about his home and his family. But he believed God had guided him to become successful in Egypt, and he worked hard at his job and for God. Joseph walked with God. Even when he was persuaded or threatened to sin, he wouldn't. He is an example of how we should live. When Joseph's brothers admitted to their sin, Joseph forgave them and he was nice to them, showing that he didn't have any resentment at all. At this point, the Israelites weren't slaves to the Egyptians. A lot of the Egyptians had sold their belongings and themselves to Pharaoh for food, making themselves slaves. The Israelites hadn't done this, and they were allowed to live in a particular area of Egypt because of what Joseph had done for Egypt, especially by getting them through the famine. Joseph put his family in the best land, the land of Ramesses. Pharaoh allowed Joseph to give his family lots of food and Pharaoh didn't make them pay any taxes and he told the Egyptians that they should do this because whilst all the nations around Egypt were suffering from famine, Joseph had ensured that Egypt had lots of food. Pharaoh said the Egyptians were indebted to Joseph's God. Over the years after Joseph died, the Israelites were very successful and their population grew so that there were more Israelites than Egyptians in Egypt. A new pharaoh saw this and was concerned that the Israelites were a powerful group and could join with Egypt's enemies and destroy the Egyptians. He wanted to get the Israelites out of Egypt, but found out that they were very useful workers for Egypt and it would be better to keep them, so instead he turned them into slaves and forced them to build the cities of Pithom and Ramses. But the more work pharaoh forced them to do, the more the population grew. They responded by giving them even more work. They forced the women to work on farms, but still their population grew. Pharaoh was angry that forcing them to do more and more and more work was not succeeding in reducing their numbers, so he ordered that male children should be killed as soon as they are born. Satan had organised this. He knew that a boy would be born to deliver the Israelites from Egypt back to Israel, and so he wanted to kill this boy to stop this from happening. The women feared God more than Pharaoh, so didn't kill the boys. God blessed them for this. 
However, Pharaoh found out that they weren't killing their sons, and he got angry, and he ordered all of his people to watch and make sure that all the Israelites' males were thrown into a river. When this cruel law was in place, Moses was born. His mother hid him as long as she could with any safety, and then made a little boat from reeds and placed it at the edge of the water, while his sister subtly stayed close to the boat to see what would happen. Angels were also watching, making sure that Moses wasn't hurt, because his mum had committed him to God's care with earnest prayers and tears. And these angels led Pharaoh's daughter to the river. She saw the strange little boat and sent one of her maids to fetch it. And when she saw Moses crying inside, she felt sorry for him. She knew that a Hebrew mum had done this to try and save the baby, and Pharaoh's daughter immediately decided that she would make him her son. Moses' sister came up to Pharaoh's daughter and asked whether she wanted her to find an Israelite nurse to nurse the baby for her, and Pharaoh's daughter agreed. Moses' sister rushed to her mum and brought her to Pharaoh's daughter, and Moses was handed back to her mum with money to help her to nurse him. She was happy and confident that God had protected Moses, and she worked hard to educate him well because she was certain that God had saved him for important work. She taught him to fear God and love truth and justice. She prayed that God would protect him from things that would corrupt his character. She taught him to bow and pray to God, for he alone could hear him and help him in an emergency. She taught him how sinful idolatry was. She knew that when he became twelve, she would have to hand him over to Pharaoh's daughter. So she had to teach him well, especially knowing that in Pharaoh's family, everything around him is designed to make him forget about the true God. The teaching stopped him becoming proud and sinful. Here Satan was defeated. By encouraging Pharaoh to kill the male children, he thought he would stop God's purposes by killing one whom God had planned to deliver his people. But the very law to kill the Israelite boys was the means that God used to overrule Satan to place Moses in the royal family where he had advantages to become educated and qualified to lead his people from Egypt. Pharaoh expected to have Moses become his replacement. He educated him to lead Egypt's armies. Moses was a great favourite with Pharaoh and was respected because he led battles with superior skill and wisdom. The Egyptians thought Moses was remarkable. Angels told Moses that God had chosen him to deliver the Israelites. The Israelite rulers were also taught by angels that the time for deliverance was close and that Moses was the man that God would use to do this. Moses thought that they would be delivered by war and that he would stand at the head of the Israelite army. Thinking this, Moses guarded his affections for his adopted mother and Pharaoh in case it would be difficult for him to do what God wanted against them. God protected Moses from being corrupted by the influences around him. He never forgot the principles his mum had taught him, and he loved God and the Israelites so much that he didn't hide his ethnicity to become a royal heir. When Moses was forty, he was looking at the burdens his people had, and he saw an Egyptian hitting an Israelite. Moses checked that no one was around him, and then he killed the Egyptian and hid his body in the sand. The next day he saw two Israelites fighting and he asked them why they were doing this. They angrily asked Moses what made him think that he was their judge, and whether he was going to kill them like the guy he killed yesterday. Moses was shocked and scared. He realised people knew that he had killed the Egyptian. When Pharaoh heard about this, he tried to have Moses killed. Moses escaped from Pharaoh by going to Midian. God led Moses there, to live with a man called Jethro, a man who worshipped God. He was a shepherd and a priest, and he let Moses work for him, looking after his animals. Later, he married Jethro's daughter, and he ended up living in Midian for forty years. Moses was wrong to kill the Egyptian. He thought that the Israelites knew that God had brought him up to free them from the Egyptians, and that he would free them by fighting. But God hadn't decided to free them by war, but by his own power, so that people would ascribe the deliverance to God alone. Moses wouldn't have been ready to go straight from Pharaoh's court and all the indulgences he had to then lead the Israelites back to Israel. God organised it so that he would have time learning from living in poverty and difficulties. God sent his angels to tell him about the future. Here he learned the great lesson of self-control and humility. While he worked as a humble shepherd, 
God was preparing him to become the spiritual shepherd of his sheep, the Israelites. As Moses led Jethro's animals to the desert, he came to Mount Sinai. Here God appeared to Moses from a bush that was on fire. God told him that he had seen the Israelites' difficulties, and he has come to deliver them from this, to bring them back to Israel. God told Moses to go to Pharaoh to free his people. The time had fully come where God would have Moses exchange the shepherd's staff for the rod of God, which he would make powerful in performing signs and wonders, in freeing him from oppression and in protecting them from their enemies. Moses agreed to the mission. God reassured Moses that the men that wanted to kill him are all dead.